Hi, I'm Caleb, a product engineer here at Matter. In this video, I'll show you how to use Matter 7 to issue a verifiable credential via the OpenID for VCI protocol. We'll experience the end-to-end -end issuance journey as a user, and then I'll take you under the hood to see how you can configure it using your very own Matter tenant. When designing an issuance journey, it's important to focus on how we can streamline the experience, not just for us as developers, but also for our users. By using the OpenID for VCI protocol, we can rely on the familiar experience of an authentication provider, like Auth0, and build on that foundation to transition users to these new digital experiences. This also means that we can use data from the Auth provider in the issued credential. It's a win-win. This protocol has more than just a catchy name. If you're interested, you can find more information in the video description. Let's explore how this all comes together. It's time to get a credential issued to my own digital wallet. I'm gonna go ahead and scan a QR code with my wallet. And you can see that I'm being offered an employee credential from Trustco. I'll go ahead and accept this. I'm gonna put my password in so I can authenticate. And I'm happy with my preferred name, so I'm gonna add my pronouns. With that done, I have my flashy new employee credential in my wallet. It contains information about me that Trusco has provided, and it's all verifiable. See how simple that was? I'm gonna show you how Matter 7 can be used to facilitate this new streamlined experience. If we deconstruct what we just walked through, we started with a QR code. I'll cover this at the end of our configuration. But once we scanned the code, we were presented with a login screen. This is where the user authenticates and identifies themselves to initiate the issuance workflow. For this demo, I'm using Auth0, but you could substitute this with any OpenID Connect compatible provider. To configure our Auth provider in Matter 7, I'm gonna use our Postman collection to make a request. In our Auth provider config, I'll provide my Auth0 URL, client ID, and client secret. It's helpful if you don't share this with other people or broadcast it in a YouTube video. For our use case, Auth0 serves as both our identity and Auth provider. To determine the information we'll receive about a user, we need to include the correct scopes. Check with your provider to see what they support. In this case, the scopes are OpenID, Profile, and Email. If you want to select any of the information provided by these scopes and store it on your tenant, you can provide a list of claim identifiers in the Claims to Persist array. We don't really recommend this for privacy considerations, but it is an option if your use case requires it. How you configure forwarded and static request parameters is dependent on what your provider supports. As the name implies, static request parameters are consistent across issuance journeys. In this demo, I've configured the prompt for login, meaning that the user will always be required to authenticate even if they've logged in previously on that device. Forwarded params are dynamic for each user's journey. Here, we've specified login hint. If you recall in our demo, when we were directed to login, my email was already populated. This is just one example of how you could use this. That's all we need. Let's send this off. Here in the response, we can see that we've gotten a redirect URL. You'll need to add this to your authentication provider's own configurations so that the user is redirected properly after they've successfully authenticated. Congrats. We've now configured our authentication provider with Matter 7. This is a foundational piece of the OpenID for VCI protocol, and it's very generic by design. This is great for a lot of scenarios, but there are many issuers who want the flexibility to add their own business logic into this flow. For example, issuers often need to interact with the users as a part of the issuance journey. If you recall in the demo, after authenticating, I was asked to provide my preferred name and pronouns. Those of you who are paying attention might have noticed that this was a different URL. We refer to this optional step of the journey as an interaction hook. It enables you to plug in any custom experiences to interact with the user after they have authenticated but before the credential is issued. You might want to do this to gather additional information about a user and then include that in the credential. Another use case could be to provide higher identity assurance, like a lifeness check, for example. As the issuer, you are responsible for creating and managing these components. But Matter 7 will provide a secure way for you to integrate this into your issuance journey. Here you can see a simple configuration for connecting your interaction hook. The first thing you'll need is your publicly accessible URL where your component is hosted. For this demo, I created the simple form you saw earlier. 
If your interaction requires information retrieved from your auth provider, you can specify claim identifiers in the claims array. In this demo, my name was automatically populated into my interaction hook, so I've configured the name in the claims array. In the response, you can see that we've received a secret. As a part of the issuance journey, the user is redirected to your interaction hook with a JWT. If you aren't familiar with JWTs, you can find some really helpful resources in our docs. The user then completes the interaction and is redirected back to Matter 7. To secure this custom experience, you will need to use the provided secret to verify the JWT and then return the data in a new encoded JWT. I'm going to show you how I've configured my interaction hook. This is the code for my simple interaction hook. I'm getting the session token from the query parameters. This is the JWT that Matter 7 provides. And I'm decoding that token without verifying its signature. This means that I don't have to expose my secret to the front end, and it means that I can use the claims that are within in the JWT to actually fill out my form. In my demo, uh, I'm pulling the name from the JWT, and then the pronouns are just provided as an option. Uh, the user can go ahead and provide their preferred name and pronouns, and then when they've done that, they can submit an API request to the back end. Uh, you can see here that we are doing some light validation to ensure that the, there is actually a JWT present. My Frontier makes a post request to my API route containing the original JWT from Matter 7, as well as the new data it's retrieved from the user's interaction. It then decodes that information and verifies it using the secret provided from the API configuration earlier. Using that secret and the data we've retrieved from the front end, we can now construct an entirely new JWT that only Matter 7 can verify. With that in check, we can construct a final redirect URL where we'll send this back to the user and redirect back to Matter 7 inside the wallet. And that's how I've configured my interaction hook. Let's jump back into the credential. Looking at our credential, you might be wondering where some of this information comes from. Our name and email came from our auth provider, while my pronouns were supplied by the user in our interaction hook. But where did the image and employee number come from? That's where claim sources come in. Issuers commonly have databases that already include a wealth of information about their users. Claim sources are a way of bringing that information into the issuance flow when issuing credentials. To do this, you can configure Matter 7 to query an endpoint during issuance. Claim sources have a flexible configuration, which means you can save time and use an existing endpoint or build a custom one for this flow. Whatever works best for you. Once the user is redirected from the interaction hook, Matter 7 can query information from an endpoint. The query can include any of the claims that we've retrieved so far. It's important to note that not all of the information returned from a claim source needs to be included in the credential. I'll show you how to specify this later. In our Postman collection, we need to define the URL endpoint that we'll query. In this example, I've set up a simple service with a mock database. Naturally, we're going to have to authenticate with this service. To do this, Matter 7 supports two authentication methods, API key or OAuth client credentials. For this example, I'm providing an API key in the authorization object. The request can be made either using GET or POST methods, depending on how your implementation handles these requests. For this, I'm using GET. To make sure you'll get the desired response from your claim source, we define a request parameters object. How these parameters are processed depends on your claim source implementation. They can be provided in two ways. You can add parameters dynamically by mapping them from the claims object. The claims object represents all of the data that we've accumulated up until this point. This could be from the authentication provider or the interaction hook. In this example, we are retrieving the email from the claims object and passing it as a request parameter. This enables us to filter the query for this specific user. Another form of dynamic mapping is by retrieving them from the credential configuration object. This object represents the structure of the credential configuration, and it's something that we'll cover later. But for now, you can see here that we're mapping the type of credential, or the profile, into the query. The other option is to define a static request parameter. This is achieved by providing a default value without a mapping like we've done here. This might be useful to filter the response regardless of the user's specific information, or have a consistent query across users. For our demo, I'm only using the email parameter, so I'm going to get rid of the credential profile and user type. I'm going to go ahead and submit this. With our request submitted, you can see now that we have an ID. We'll use this later. So we know where all of this information is coming from, but how will Matter 7 know how to use these claims to actually create a credential? This is where credential configuration comes in. Think of this as a template that defines how your credential is constructed. 
It details where the credential information comes from, what the credential looks like in the wallet, when it should expire, and if you as the issuer should be able to revoke it. If we look at our Postman collection, we can see our credential configuration object. With OpenID for VCI, you can issue credentials of different profiles. And with Matter 7, we can specifically issue mobile credentials, web credentials, and compact credentials. You can find out more about these different profiles below. In our example, we have issued a web credential. The first thing that's important to define is a unique type for this credential configuration. This will be how verifiers can request your credentials. Branding is completely optional, and the wallet will load fallback values. That being said, we highly recommend branding your credentials to add personality and deliver experiences in line with your trusted brand. The next few options handle how the data is collated. We provide the claim source ID we talked about earlier, and then use the claim mappings object to define how the data is provided. The structure of this will be familiar from when you configured your claim source request parameters. Let's think about how our data will flow. We start by receiving our email and name claims from the authentication provider. The user is then redirected to the interaction hook, which we configured to receive the name. The hook asks the user if they want to update their name and requires that they set their preferred pronouns. This information is returned and is merged into the claims object. Finally, the claim source is queried using the email and returns the image and employee number. You can see here that our claim mappings object contains our name, pronouns, image, employee number, and email claims. And you can see that I am requesting them all individually from the claims object. For credentials to be useful across boundaries, people need to understand the structure of your credentials data. For example, in this credential, I have an image. In order for this to be consumed, I need to provide a context that tells the wallet how to use this information. In this example, it's schema.org. But if you're running in production, we recommend bringing your own strongly typed schema that you've designed instead of using a generic one. Our last few options detail the lifecycle management of a credential. By default, only credential metadata is persisted on your Matter 7 tenant when you issue a credential. If you want to persist the complete credential data as well, you can achieve this by setting persist to true. Please take PII and privacy considerations into account before enabling this. Some issuance use cases require an issuer to revoke or invalidate a credential at some point in the future. To enable this, set revocable to true. Similar to real life IDs and certificates, digital credentials usually have an expiry date. This is defined using any of the options in the expires in object. These configurations differ between credential profiles, so check out our docs for example configs, branding guidelines, and general best practices for your profile. Now that we understand our credential configuration, we can go ahead and submit it. In the response, we get an identifier that we'll use shortly. With all that configuration out of the way, it's time to package this for our users. To issue a credential to a user's wallet, we need them to understand who they're engaging with and what they'll receive as an outcome. OpenID for VCI defines a way for the wallet to discover this information in what is referred to as a credential offer. Once the wallet receives such an offer, it's able to fetch the information from the issuer and display it to the holder asking for consent. The information retrieved contains the URL of our authentication provider and upon consent, the holder is redirected to the URL and the issuance workflow begins. In our Postman collection, you can see that when we generate a credential offer, the first thing we need to provide is the identifiers of the credential configs we wish to issue. You can issue more than one credential in this workflow by providing several identifiers. Because we have configured request parameters in our authentication provider, we can provide a request parameters object. In this, we have added our login hint. Earlier, we configured Matter 7 to forward this to our authentication provider. This is a dynamic field, so we'd only share this offer with one of our users, but you could construct a more generic offer that doesn't include any user-specific parameters and share that offer with a wider audience. With our offer packaged, we receive a URI which we need to share with the intended holder. This can be achieved in one of three ways. The first is via a QR code, like we showed in the demo earlier. The second is by sending a secure message to our wallet. And the third is by deep link which provides a more convenient way for users to accept an offer on their mobile device. You can find examples of these interactions in the docs. We understand that this might seem like a lot, but most of these configurations are reusable, so you only really need to do it once. And once you do, you can enjoy the tremendous benefits of our OpenID for VCI workflow. It's interoperability, the streamlined experience of integrating with your existing systems, and it's flexibility. 
We've found that these advantages enable simplified issuance of verifiable information across industries and use cases. If you're interested in exploring how this might work for you, we're happy to chat. Thanks for watching.